Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. It's cold outside, but we still have to go check the trees. We've had a roller coaster year of weather throughout the entire year. It seems like we'll have a 20 degree temperature swing on any given day or any given week of the year. We'll have a week of hot and then a week of cold, or we'll have two days hot and then two days cold. We were just in the uh, 30s and 40s, just a 24 hour period ago. And then this morning we woke up to six degrees with a uh, wind chill factor of negative nine with the light breeze. So it is a gloriously sunshiny day the bright sun in the sky back there. Uh, we're in the shade by the cabin cold frame right now here over my shoulder, but it's cold. And so we have to bundle up. Um, we gotta check our trees. We're in the hat, we're in the gloves. Oh, and a big thank you uh, for a, a former student. Yesterday we got to go see some of our former students at their transition program. And uh, this former student made matching scarves for Mrs. Weiss and I. And so, yeah, comfortable, soft, and keeping me warm when I go check the trees, which we gotta go do. And here we go, into the cold frame. So we're out at the cabin cold frame, and at first glance, it looks lovely out here. The image on my screen looks green and lush. We still have some, we still have some fall color on the barberry, that's <laughs> so crazy. We've got uh, our Korean fur right there, Looking really quite nice. I'm looking forward to seeing how that pushes out growth next year. And with the boxwood over the rock, I took the big rocks off of the pot to make it lighter. And just underneath that uh, stump down there, all those little roots and everything, they're hovering around a big rock. And we're gonna leave that all grow next year. Coming up to the top here, another barberry with those uh, brittle leaves, a few that are left. Catoni aster, we've got the weeping willow. There's a uh, Japanese garden juniper. Everything's looking pretty good. Got the boxwood in the back. A couple, a couple of um, quaking aspen there in the pot. Taxus, the yew. Over there, there's a Chinese quince back there. That one's been a bizarre one. We've got our elm forests. We still have plenty of uh, gold in large color, but if we shake hard enough, we'll have a nice uh, golden large floor here. A couple of the uh, other plantings here of the golden large. Uh, Another Katoni Aster back there. And the great big Barberry that suffered a little bit of a dieback this year. But we're gonna see which ones of those uh, survive. And we're gonna be plucking away some of those extra uh, bottom sections possibly next year. Maybe getting rid of one of them. So on these cold days, we definitely have to make sure that we're taking care of our trees out in the cold frames. So let's take a peek at the Govies and see where things are at. So right before I came outside, I checked my Govies out to see what was happening in the cabin cold frame and the two garage cold frames. After clicking on the Gobi app, I instantly can see the temps and humidity of my three zones. The cabin cold frame, the garage high and low. Notice the cabin cold frame is a few degrees warmer than the garage cold frame. Now I can set this a little lower and we'd have a closer to 40 range. Also notice how the top of the cold frame in the garage is 40 versus 35 on the lower end. The garage cold frame is taller and I believe the rise of that warm air is what makes the slight difference. I just need to make sure to monitor those top trees for earlier drying of the soil. I might possibly need to water a little bit more up top. I filmed on December 3rd and this graph shows the hour I snapped the screenshot of this Gobi region. Notice a high point of 42 and a low point of 40. Here's the day at a glance, uh, shows a nice average of 41.5. I like the range, but want the higher end to be maybe a little bit lower. The week at a glance shows one dip, but it was very quick. The month shows things have been working very well. Again, I'm so thankful. Notice that the big spike on the 10th of November, we were in the 50s that day, so the cold frames definitely heated up. Here now is the garage low Gobi during the same hour this morning. I really like this balance. High of 38.7, low 35.1, and a nice average of 36.2. For the day, we came close to the freezing point, which was because of this morning's low of 6 degrees above zero Fahrenheit outside, but 34.7, not too bad in the cold frame. It's flirting with too cold, but still in the right range. 
The week at a glance shows one spike and dipped to freezing. We again hit the uh, single digits for the first time earlier in the week. And then the month at a glance showing a good overall average of temps. Maybe a couple of degrees higher than I want. This though, I can certainly adjust. Finally, the cabin cold frame during the 9 a.m. hour. This is a tad high and I'll likely turn down this thermostat just slightly. The past 24 hours, look at that afternoon spike of 52.7. The past week is looking good. There is that roller coaster I was talking about, 55.8 Tuesday afternoon, single digit lows 36 hours later meant a low dip. We wrap it up with a month at a glance. Look at the roller coaster in the early part of November. This is why we must continue to monitor our trees and this Govi system is super awesome to have. So far, things are looking great overall. So we prepare for a nice fly-in, not of the tree, but of the Gobi thermometer. Look at that fly-in camera work. Isn't that fun and exciting? Nope, too much glare. Let's go back to the left. There we are between the larches. We're at 40 comfortable degrees in here. So if the fan wasn't on behind me, it'd be pretty toasty in here. Uh, but that fan is helping to circulate the air. We got 59% humidity. So right now the cabin cold frame is ideal. It's right where I want it to be, 40 degrees. And as we look back at the last week, the month, the day with the Gobi thermometer, you see that the temperatures have been doing a nice uh, regulation, um, keeping track of the nice regulated uh, cold from, I should say. Our heater is doing its source, doing its thing right there. We got a little bit of heat coming on right now because I opened the door and it's cooling off just a little bit. So six degrees this morning negative nine wind chill we have to make sure our systems are a go and the cabin cold frame is doing just that i'm super thankful that the uh go v is showing me accurate temperatures and uh, humidity i'm thankful that the uh, heat source is going on this year no uh, worries there our weather keeps going up and down so we have to be very vigilant we have to check our trees and make sure they're going to be okay this is a hobby that really is a lifestyle remember and uh, these trees could go south pretty quickly if we don't watch them so try to check your trees daily if you're not doing so um, and you're going to have better results in the end i'm super thankful for a lot of things right now and so the reason why i've been saying that a lot is because i'm super thankful for all of you uh, just last night uh, yesterday after work and uh, on my way home from work and when I checked my technology after I got off the road I had a bunch of uh, congratulations from you folks for me hitting 3,000 subscribers to Dave's Bonsai so I can't express my gratitude enough uh, thanking all of you for continuing to throw in some comments some likes uh, giving me some suggestions for the trees that I've been working on things I can do for the pond and the yard and the mold problem in the house um, the YouTube family is really, it's been a YouTube family. There's no other way to say it. Uh, it's, I've been so, so thankful. I've got my uh, friend Bald Yeti up in uh, Alaska sending me positive vibes all the time. So from that northwest corner from where I am all the way down uh, to Matt down in Connecticut. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, great people out there in the YouTube world. Uh, people in the south, people in the west. I got people in Canada, in Europe. Um, and I just appreciate it so much. And uh, as I grow with Bonsai, I hope you all are growing with Bonsai. And um, I have to give a shout out to Nigel, of course, and of course our, 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 our Carnage Cam Master, uh, uh, Jay from Blue Jay Bonsai. You know, I'm not gonna forget you guys either. So super great to have the support of, of the YouTube channel's families. <laughs> um, so thank you. I'm just full of gratitude today for the warmth around my neck, for the cold frame doing what it is, and for all of you out there. So this is my thank you episode as we check the cold frames and be thankful for what's working in the bonsai world. Let's continue the update of what's going on in the cold frames as I once again say thank you, thank you, and We'll thank you some more. And now it's time to squeeze out of this thing backward and not fall into the pond. Some smooth photography there as I backed out. Let's head up to the garage and check out the garage cold frame. Because 
my second stall looks like that. Whew, yeah, that's a little bright, huh? Oh, look, we got some critters. Those are the bunnies. The bunnies hopefully leaving the uh, fire bush alone. That's the only thing left of the fire bush, everybody, because we had critter chop down below. We wrapped it really high this year. Can you see that? That might become a literati style uh, fire bush bonsai in the future. All right. Gotta get rid of the old pallet. Gotta move out the snowblower. And then we can unbuckle the cold frame door. And then we can open up to see what we got going on. So the fans are on currently, that's nice. We've got some trees in here, doing pretty good. So there you can see the movement from the fan that's down there. The movement of that little tag right there. Those tags are from some client trees. I'm keeping, uh, keeping uh, some trees stored for the winter. So I hope they're watching the channel. Look at your trees, everybody. Doing good. We've got a Japanese garden juniper there. We've got a boxwood that's being protected right there. And uh, we've got, uh, that is a trident maple back there. Fun tree there. And this is a uh, really nice thick trunked Alberta spruce. So that could be fun. Um, and here's my trees, some of my trees. I got my Japanese maples looking good. My Chinese elm over that rock or leaning up. It's, it's actually the tree leaning on the rock. And then my cascade juniper up there. Let's look at the goby since we're right here. 39 degrees with 61% humidity. Only a degree off from the cabin cold frame. Really nice. So when I showed you the goby information moments ago, I had talked about how the heat's a little bit different now that we're having some cold spells. So we have the Go V on the bottom, which is at 33 degrees right now. And the top one with the heater on right now is 39. So we have that five or so degree difference, four, five, six degree differences between up top and between the bottom. So the heater down there is kicking up heat and it's going up and it seems to be hovering and, and, and staying on the top more. So these trees might get a little warmer. So I just have to be careful that I'm keeping things above freezing um, but not uh, too hot. I got some more great trees down there. We've got another uh, Japanese maple right there. Those are the elms from Candace. I've got those in here. They still have leaves on for crying out loud. We got another garden juniper back there. And there's a ginkgo back there for a client. And here's my trident maple from the Peter T series. That's uh, just sitting there loving life. And all these buckets right now would be trees if I had more trees to put in here, but I'm pretty good with space this year. And these buckets have rainwater still in them. So I have three kitty litter buckets full of rainwater, two five gallon buckets. That should last me well through the month of December. Um, we just gotta make sure that they're not turning too much into ice. And they're not, <laughs> because they shouldn't be because we have 33 to 40 degrees, give or take in here. So once again, I'm thankful that things are working. Now the thing I'll have to keep track of with the uh, garage cold frame is of course the temperature flux from the top and the bottom of this very cold frame. That's about six to seven feet tall, about six feet wide and nice easy access, uh, but the heat seems to be hovering on the top more. So I just have to be careful that those trees aren't drying out faster. Got to make sure they're not uh, too dry. Now I just watered all of these trees in the last few days. So I know that they're all in really good shape here. Um, of course, uh, it would uh, be a smart thing to do to make sure you're always checking the trees as well. And I've got, uh, Really good situation with my trees. Everything looks really good, so I'm okay. So the garage cold frames are looking good, and again, thankful that everything is doing its job. I got the heater kicking on when it has to go on. I got some fans to circulate that air, and uh, the trees are all looking really good. So next, my last part of my cold frame, if you will, update is the actual garage and the trees that I have in the garage. So let's look at those now. First up, we've got the slab planting. So we have the birch forest, the white paper birch forest with a little bit of maple on the left-hand side. 
we've got our forest on the slab sitting out in the garage. Now I've only had to water this once. It stayed really nice and moist for the first couple of weeks. And just the other day, I put some water on here and we only had a few drips of water going down to the bottom there. So everything was pretty good. Everything's feeling really good right now, but it is uh, on that verge of being frozen in the garage here because we hit six above zero last night. Now the garage hovers in the twenties for a while. So um, deep down in there, it's gonna slowly start to freeze as I keep the garage door open. So we'll shut the garage door and this should be fine on the slab and if worst case scenario if these lows uh, were multiple days in a row i would maybe even put on a heater in the garage for a couple of overnights just to make sure that this gentle very sensitive on the slab not much protection root system would be okay for the long haul they are cold hardy trees they should be fine um, but again i don't want this garage to get much below 20 degrees next up we have the two forests the minnesota forests that are over on the boat we've got uh the Alberta spruce, this is the back of this forest. And it has uh, the tree on the side there that is uh, one of the um, quaking aspens. We've got uh, the little trees up over there and that is the um, Siberian elm trees and a couple of maples that are still hanging on back in there. But the Alberta spruces, shining bright, looking good. And then the large forest is in there on the fish tank. Everything's still okay. Got my shadow there in the way. So there is our large forest with the sun blazing on it right now. Um, still has got a few of these uh, needles on as well. You could shake them off if we so needed to, but those are looking pretty good too. And I just gave them a little bit of watering just a couple days ago, which was really good timing because now as it's getting colder, um, I think it had time to just get a little bit of moisture everywhere. And now the trees are gonna sit kind of in that frozen state. Now I kept these outside last year, but the critters got them. And so I know they were fine with the Minnesota winter. And so I know these should be fine in the garage too, as we don't dip below 20 degrees, most likely. So there we have the forests just in the garage with the boat and the rest of the stuff. My fingers are getting cold. Let's go back inside. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere we go. Here's an update on the holiday cactus. The Thanksgiving cacti were trimmed just a few days back. I wanted you to see all the little new red buds growing on this guy right here. So you can see a couple in the back, up on the top there, that back branch back there. Just ever so slightly. I haven't been watering this thing until the last couple of days when I saw these peek out. We just give it a little bit of water. There's one of the other cacti. Got some red new growth there. I love when it's the red new growth. And then the guy in the middle. There's a couple on that back one back there. Ever so small, dainty, little. But things are growing and we always love that. I have an unfortunate update for you with my Green Island ficus. Um, I just noticed the other day some wilting leaves. This whole left side of the tree is dead. I did cut it back and I saw no green cambium. And the leaves are just dangling like this. And they just kind of come right off. And the whole limb is actually dangling. It's not like it's drying, needing water. And I'm wondering if I've overwatered this one. This back branch still has a little bit of life to it. And I'm wondering if I should just look at the soil and investigate and see what's going on underneath. But this Green Island ficus was loving life only a week or so ago and something seems to have attacked this thing and nothing else in my plant room has been doing anything like this. So I'm a little bit uh, bummed about the Green Island ficus. Anybody have any ideas? Put those in the comments for me. I'd love to hear. I might have to do some surgery on the soil and see what's going on. Maybe I have root rot. Here's the update on the Ming Aurelia variegated style. I put four cuttings into this really neat uh, Chinese pod. Got a lot of fun comments on this pod, and it does look really cool. I love the tan color with this really nice light uh, green and white variegated leaf. Uh, the one up in the front left there, a little droopy. That one didn't have much woody substance on it, so it was uh, kind of limiting there. And the other three are still perked up and soaking up some water, so that's good. Maybe we'll get three out of four in this one, but we haven't taken that one out yet. So there's a quick update. We just did that only a few days ago. Well, that's going to wrap things up. Many, many thanks to all of you out there for making this possible. I love making the videos and I love that 3,000 people have found it entertaining enough or informational enough to continue to watch. 
and to check things out. So 3,000 subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you. We've made some great friends and connections in the Bonsai world, and I think, I hope we're all learning from each other, and keep those comments, questions, and things coming in the chats, and uh, it's been a blast. I'm humbled, and I'm proud, and uh, just happy to share all this with all of you, and I love when you have some feedback. So we have the Green Island Ficus that, uh, I don't know what's going on there. Put some comments down below on that if you have some ideas. The Ming Aurelia behind my shoulder here is doing okay. And the cabin cold frame and the garage cold frames, they're doing really well. Uh, the last image of the Gobi after I worked out there showed that instant drop array with cold weather like this when it drops that fast. Yeah, when it's nine degrees outside and you open up that cold frame, it's gonna chill down in a hurry. But that allowed me to check to make sure everything was working and the systems are all a go. And finally, on this 3,000 episode, uh, 3,000 viewers, um, Feliz Navidad. The hibiscus tree is blinking some lights. Yeah, it is beginning to look a little bit like that uh, Christmas time. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, take care of you. Take care of your bones eye, holiday lights or not, and we'll catch you on the next one.